the final score, Wrexham 4, Dagenham and Redbridge 1. And, wow, my first question. Is that the best we've played under Phil Parkinson? I kind of think it may well be. Uh, with the obvious exception, I suppose, you know, those Stockport County games were up against high-quality opposition last season, and we got two good wins against them. But, my word, this, this was tasty. The quality of performance in this match really was quite something and we had a treat watching that i assure you unchanged team again third game in a row wrexham getting their fifth win in the row as well and early on dagenham were interesting they took a heavy beating against Notts county in their last match and changed things around a bit they've often played a three at the back a holding midfielder in front and that's allowed them to have two men up front and two very fast wing backs getting up the pitch. They altered it slightly here, I think, trying to get around the sides of our three centre backs. And it, in theory, was an interesting and very brave thing to do. They had Paul McCallum through the middle, and of course, venerated target man at this lev level. And then had two players, Josh Walker and Junior Baraish, either side, who have real pace. And in the opening stages, the little Wrexham looked a better side, and were already piecing together some nice passages of play Dagenham did show threat that, those two pacey players down the sides without actually creating anything clear cut did show that they had potential to come at Wrexham but the first big moment came in the 10th minute and after that I mean honestly the only question I can ask is how did Wrexham only score two goals in the subsequent 35 minutes of the half because this was a complete performance in every respect everybody contributed apart from mark howard in terms of goalkeeping because he had very little to do um although his distribution was good so you know, he was able to contribute in that respect but yeah i mean it was remarkable and it started off, like i said the 10th minute mullen and palmer from the very start were at it and were terrorizing the defense which had been changed around considerably and didn't look too clever in all honesty they were getting pulled around they were losing their individual battles they had a debutante on loan from Millwall on the right side of the three they had Johan Zuma who looked horribly out of his depth on the left hand side of the three and odd to say it in a game where Wrexham could have scored double figures the central midfielder Ling it's a, it's a big pardon central centre-back Ling and the goalkeeper Elliot Justum I thought were outstanding as they and could definitely kept the score down and tried to hold things together but anyway let's go through those incidents 10th minute it sort of starts off mullen having already delivered into the box on the right flank coming in on the blind side marais didn't see him there and made contact with him in the box a big shout for a penalty from wrexham uh, referee didn't give it i i don't know 50 50 as far as i'm concerned the way i described it at the time i would stand by it's the sort of decision that if it was in the Premier League, whatever the ref gave, VAR wouldn't touch it. it. It could have been a penalty, it might not have been. It was quite heavy contact between the defender and Mullen, but on the other hand, Mullen uh, was sort of hip to hip and wasn't really like a, a, a leg going into him as such. So you could have cut it either way. Wrexham were unperturbed and within a minute very nearly he got the opening goal good ball down the right side by Hayden Anthony Ford was on fire he burst down the right hand side pulled it nicely back to James Jones on the edge of the area and he smashed a powerful shot which drew the first of a number of excellent saves from Justin in the Dagenham goal Wrexham kept going on toes over the long throw in which went to the near post Zuma missed it completely it bounced into the area there was ricochets under the bar before finally it was hooked back in by Davis and his shot was well shot come drive across the face hit defenders again in the crowded goal mouth and, and was hacked away and still Wrexham kept going quick throw in again on the right hand side Mundy squaring the ball on and Mullen from left of centre just outside the box, trying to replicate his winner against Dagenham last season, curling it with his right foot around Justin, but just wide this time of the right post. It wasn't far off at all. It felt inevitable that a goal had to come, and in the 25th minute, finally, it did. And it was a lovely goal too. James Jones again did well in the first half. Jones was sensational. 
got the ball in midfield, spread it quickly out to the right. Ford was there once more, again got past his man and measured a luscious cross, swinging away from the keeper to the far post. Palmer attacked it aggressively, hurled himself bodily at it and planted the header into the top left corner from about four yards out. I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat a lot of what I said in commentary because it was just, gosh, it, it was the aesthetic and the visceral coming together beautifully. Ford's cross was sumptuous. It really was. It was asking somebody to score. But then Boy Palmer just met it with sheer aggression. And you look at the highlights when they come out. Palmer, I mean, it's coming at a really awkward height for him. And yet he generates a heck of a lot of power and to plant it in the top left corner. Excellent header, excellent cross, well-deserved goal. And the chances just kept coming. A glorious move just three minutes later. Palmer in midfield starting her off with an excellent turn to make himself space and pass it inside. When it came back to him, he pinged a glorious pass across to the right-hand side where Ford on the flank cushioned it first time on the volley to James Jones as he ran into the box in the right channel. Jones back heeled it first time back into the path of Ford. Ford struck his shot well from the edge of the area first time again. If this had gone in we would have had a proper goal of the season contender. It was blocked though and deflected towards goal when Mullen was really sharp to get to it in the six yard box and flick it on target. But unluckily for him, as I said, Ling, I thought, had a very good game. And he read the danger, got close to Mullen, was able to block it behind for a corner. But it was just incessant from Wrexham. And as the half wore on, the quality of the play and the quality of the chances simply grew and grew and grew. And the tempo was terrific as well. Soon after that, it's Young sweeping in a corner which is headed across the face of goal by Hayden. The ball was kept alive and Young, the corner taker, cutting in, got to the corner of the box, left-hand side, and then ripped a, a fabulous strike that had just done lunging. But luckily for him, because I think he'd have struggled to get to it, a defender on the edge six-yard box managed to get the top of his head to it and deflect it away for the corner. Remember Young's first season? He won goal of the season at Dagenham with a fabulous hit past Justin. And the poor keeper must have had that familiar feeling as he dived, thinking, I'm not going to reach this. This is going in the top right corner. Defenders, header, just about saved Dagenham. But from that corner, Wrexham nearly scored. Young, whose delivery from corners was impeccable, swept a really nice, fast-paced delivery to about 10 yards out. Palmer met it with a rocket header, and unluckily for him, it just scraped the right post as it went wide. Palmer was dropping off into midfield and creating play. When we bought him, I thought, yeah, this guy isn't a target man as such. He has the capacity to drop off spot passes and really split defences open. And this was the game in which those qualities I'd seen in them at Wimbledon really, really came out because he was a playmaker. He was absolutely terrific. Uh, so a couple of minutes after that chance, Palmer robbing Grant and finding Davis who dribbled forwards he worked into Mullen who back heeled it and all of a sudden Palmer is picking the ball up and playing a glorious through ball James Jones breaking in that right channel into the box one-on-one -on -one with the keeper his touch just letting down and the chance had gone but it kept coming. I mean, the, ch the catalogue of opportunities. Ford on the right-hand side, again surging forwards, nutmegging his man and whipping a delicious cross again into the goal mouth. Palmer lunging at it, couldn't quite reach it. Mundi at the far post, lunging at it, managed to get contact, but wasn't able, understandably, to pull it back on target on the stretch. And then more. And this one, a controversial moment. Palmer on the halfway line. I mean, this was delicious again. Getting the ball, two men tight on him. He used the, the pace on the ball to turn them in one movement and nip between them. Glorious play. And then played another killer pass to put Mullen one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Flag went up. Incorrectly. At the time, watching it, you know, I felt it looked on size. Having looked on the replays, definitely on side. So he was one on one with the keeper down the right channel and denied a chance there to, to get his first goal of the match. He would get there, don't worry. There was a moment of huge controversy with seven minutes of the half left. 
uh, Mondi again accelerating down the left hand side and Grant, that debutante I said, mentioned about jumping in. Horrible challenge. Mondi had beaten two men and then was just completely wiped out. The referee very quickly gave him a yellow. I wonder if he'd given himself a little bit of thinking time if that would have been a red. It was a red card challenge. It was dangerous. He was in the air. He dived in. Luckily, Mondi was moving quickly and didn't have his feet planted on the ground. If he'd hit him with his feet stuck in the ground, that would have been a leg breaker, no question. Grant incredibly lucky not to be sent off. But thankfully, Mondi was all right. And from the free kick, again, Wrexham went close as the Davis swept it in. Hayden lunging, uh, just flicked it on at the near post with his right foot. Another excellent save by Justin, who had no time to react. Terrific reflexes, managed to get a hand to it and push it away. Mullen, 10 yards out, tried an extravagant back heel and really got hold of it, but it hit a body in the crowded goal mouth and came out. And eventually Wrexham worked it to the right-hand side, where Ben Toza cut into on his left foot and whipped in a tremendous cross. Hayden lost his man at the far post, but the cross just too high and he couldn't reach it. In the last minute of the half, another great chance, another great ball by Palmer, this time sending James Jones one-on-one with the keeper. It was a little tricky for him. He was going down that same right channel he tried before. It was running across him a bit, and he took a touch. Now, with hindsight, easy for me to say, probably been better off if he'd just taken it first time and tried to get across the keeper before he probably could react. But huge credit goes to Justin who again read the danger, was very, very quick off his line and made an excellent save when Jones, having taken that touch, tried to hit it back across him. Just um, uh, because Jones took the touch, had the time, because he'd anticipated quickly, to get close to him and get that block in. Unfortunately for Justin, um, but I've got to say with complete justice, because Wrexham should have been far and away by now and, and it was a big lead, the corner led to the second goal. Young sweeping the ball in to the near post area, about eight yards out. Hayden and Palmer both went for it. A defender was between them. Hayden may have just flicked it on. But it seemed to take the most contact. Sorry. I'm just uh, distracted by geese. The title of my best-selling autobiography. Uh, sorry. Hayden I, I may have flicked it on to the defender, uh, but it bounced off his back, it seemed. A cross goal to Mullen who was just all on his own in the far post, about three yards out, and had a simple header to make it 2-0. And the score still wasn't really reflecting how the game had gone. Maybe it could have done by half-time, because that was in the first minute of two added minutes, and straight from the restart, Wrexham went at it again. Palmer playing a, a fabulous ball uh, with the outside of his right foot, round the back of the fence, Mullen running in to out, picked her up on the left channel, out-muscled Ling, and then pulled it back, looking for Davis, who would have had a tap in. Robinson did really well in midfield to track Davis's run, though, and was able to intercept. So 2-0 at half-time. Dagenham will have been, I'm sure, very relieved that it was only 2-0. But I don't know if they'd have felt they were still in the game, because a load of Rooney goals difference, that the, the gulf between the sides was immense. And within 30 seconds of the restart, it could easily have been 3-0. Ball on the right-hand side, picked up by Young. Lovely clipped ball over the defence to pick up Mullen again. Running into that right channel where Wrexham had so much joy. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper, but a very, very tight angle. And as he raced to get close enough to the ball to hit it, he knew he'd have to take it first time, and the angles were against him. He did really well from about seven yards out to scoop a clever finish back across Justin, who again was racing off his line. Another outstanding save by Justin, who managed to stretch with his right arm and push the ball away. That's the, the third excellent save he'd made, and he wasn't finished yet. Soon afterwards, Johan Zuma picked up an injury and had to be stretched off. There was a long uh, break in play, and that just seemed to take the sting out of Wrexham for a bit. And so for about mm, 10 minutes or so, we actually moved things around, maybe even more, quite slowly. It turned into a sort of normal game of football. Dagenham had a lot more of the game, but they weren't really creating. They made one chance when the ball was swept in by Weston from the right-hand side, and McCallum stooped and headed the ball just wide. But to be fair, I think Howard had it pretty much covered. There wasn't enough power on the header to, to massively cause a problem. 
Dagenham set up, like I said, just left themselves open. They were a man short in midfield and Wrexham kept manipulating them. The Wrexham were getting in behind the wing backs pretty easily. The the centre backs, although Grant improved in the second half, were not didn't do terribly well apart from Bling. And Wrexham were really pulling it about. McCallum, like I say, is a good target man, but frankly, when they hit him, he wasn't holding on to the ball, partly because the three Wrexham centre backs were excellent. But yeah, Palm also he was he wasteful on the ball, McCallum. And so wasn't able to hold her up and allow Dagenham's system to 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 stick, if you will. Uh, their manager Darren McMahon, by the way, sadly wasn't at the game. Uh, he no doubt concocted the tactics, but uh, due to illness and his family, he wasn't able to attend. Obviously, I hope everything's okay for him and his family. And uh, well, maybe, maybe if he'd been there, he might have adjusted things slightly differently. As it was. After that little hiatus, Wrexham got back to the business of being scintillating. 69th minute, and Young did ever so well, intercepting the ball, beating Sagaf in the middle of the pitch, and picking out Davis with a cute little sort of handoff of the ball. He sort of ran across Davis's path and then just popped it backwards to him. And Davis, from 25 yards, ripped, set himself and ripped a left footed typical shot, but it just didn't dip enough and went over the bar. And Wrexham now, finding their rhythm, started again to tear into Dagenham's defence. Mullen working the ball wide, Palmer sweeping the ball into the edge of the six-yard box, and James Jones stooping, doing well to improvise a little flick header, which went across the face and just wide of the far post, before in the 73rd minute, the third goal finally arrived. Howard with a good long clearance, Palmer who was dominant in the air as well as being skillful and creative in deeper positions, chested the ball down beautifully to Davis, and Davis a lovely assist. You know, it was a simple pass in some ways, Mullins running outside him again into that right channel, but the weight that Davis put on it was absolute perfection. Mullen ran, he curved his run beautifully, he ran from left to right behind the back three, curving it to be onside when Davis played the pass. Davis, seeing this, just delayed it until the exact perfect moment to put the perfect weight on it. It's a simple little thing, but it's why Wrexham are so good this season. Dean Saunders, when he first came to Wrexham, complained that at National League level, it wasn't the level that he was used to in terms of quality of players. Oh, it's a good way to motivate your players, that, isn't it? And said the problem was that every pass was just slightly off, which made the next part, the next player... And then had a problem controlling it, and then his next pass would be even slightly more off again. And, and when they tried to play the ball around, each passing move was inevitably doomed to failure. Well, here we see Mullen intelligently bending his run and making runs that confuse opponents. Davis seeing, not only seeing him, not only being able to put the right weight on that pass, but also knowing when to time the pass for maximum effect. And Mullen... One on one with the keeper from quite wide in the right channel, lost his balance as he hit it, and it didn't matter because everything else technically was spot on, and he struck cleanly through the ball, beat Justin, and popped it in the bottom left corner. The, the beauty of that run, as well, quite frankly, was that Mullen is so difficult to mark. He's running left to right, so he starts off being the right sided centre back's man. By the time he receives the ball, he's outside the left side of the centre-back. And the fact that he makes that run in an offside position and then curves it back in means the centre-backs, A, have got a problem. Do we drop off, but then we're too deep? Or do we just leave him and then he can pop off and do what he does, get back into position and punish? And that's what he did. Super stuff. I mean, in 90 seconds, it was four at last. A lovely move, this. I mean, terrific goal again. The length of the pitch, Wrexham just passing it out from the back. Six of the outfield players involved in the move as Wrexham manipulates it around and just, just passed through the thirds beautifully. And it ended with Palmer being picked out on the right corner of the box and cutting inside and driving the shot, which took a deflection, it beat Justin as a result. He could only get a hand to it and push it onto the inside the post. And it trickled home 4 0. Immediately, Mullen was replaced by Elliot Lee. Soon afterwards, Palmer was replaced by Dolby. And then McFadden was given a, a, a brief rest. I believe Mondy was, and McFadden coming on in his place. Lee immediately was lively. Dolby, again, was full of energy and looking to engage the centre backs. And McFadden was lively as well down the left hand side. And in the 90th minute, Wrexham could easily have got the fifth goal again. 
Lee on the edge of the box, backing in, pinning his man, and then helping it on to Davis, who beats his man, driving into the left channel, pulling it into the goal mouth. Dolby looking to get his first goal for Exum, defended the well to just get there ahead of him and clear it. In the 95th minute, there were nine minutes added on, Dagenham, out of the blue, got a goal. Real shame for Howard, and the defence did a lot of clean sheet. It was a good burst down the left-hand side, to be fair, by Walker, who had been real lively all match. Hayden racing after him made a good block as Walker cut inside and shot from close range. The ball re rebounded into the goal mouth. Clueth stuck a foot out but could only toe poke it away as far as Villiette on the edge of the box. And to be fair, it was a hell of a finish. He really lashed it inside the right post. Howard had no chance of, of getting to it. But Wrexham still had one little delight to complete the match. A, a proper Harlem Globetrotters move. It reminded me of when Glenn Little would come on and all the players wanted to play with him. Elliot Lee getting it on the left-hand side and just working the most glorious one-touch part of move with teammates who were desperate to use his movements and intelligence and ability to play a pass and receive a pass to interact with him. So Lee pops her off outside him. Davis back heels it straight back to Lee, who by now is breaking towards the box. He works it forwards. Dolby plays a nice little cushioned wall pass first time back across so that Lee now is in a shooting position. He doesn't shoot, though he fakes to shoot, and then feeds Ford in, all in acres of space on the right-hand side. Ford, first time, pulls it straight back to Lee again. What a move this is. He drove it in, and just um, maybe reasonably got the final word of the match. An excellent save low to his right to deny Lee a goal. The ball bounced away. Dolby looked like he had an open goal tap in. And just um, on the floor, someone managed to stretch his right arm out and get a punch on it and punch it off Dolby's toe as he was swinging his foot to pop the ball into the net. Brilliant goalkeeping, brilliant approach play, brilliant attacking play by Wrexham in general and a brilliant Wrexham performance. It was breathtaking, it was fantastic. And still people are worrying about Chesterfield and Notts County still winning. If we keep playing like this, we will be fine. Don't worry, everybody. Looking through the performances, like I said, Howard, a couple of good long balls to Palmer. Uh, didn't have anything else to do, couldn't help the goal. At the back, Hayden was good. <laughs> I mean, genuinely, Hayden was good. Um, just his usual good standards, didn't have that much to do, brought the ball forwards well. Didn't stand out because there were so many outstanding performances, if you'd like. In fact, I would say that of him and Davis in some senses, and maybe Luke Young too. The three of them put in really, really good performances, which on any other game, you would be saying, wow, that was terrific. But in the, in the context of this, it was really, really hard to stand out. In the middle, Tozer again, rock solid, used the ball well. On the left-hand side, Clueth. Terrific. I'm really terrific. Did well physically against McCallum. Intercepted things well. Maybe you'd be disappointed that his toe poke away led to the goal. But to be fair, it was one of those things in the goal mouth. you got to try and get your foot to it and get it somewhere. You didn't have time to think or time to measure anything. So I think a bit harsh if we were going to be critical of him. But he was quality and he was driving forwards well too. The wing-backs were outstanding. I mean, they are at the start of the rest and careers, but both of them... By some distance, and considering how well Monty played at Dorking, this is saying something. Their best performances in the Wrexham shirt so far. Ford was magnificent. Ford was beating men easily, putting real quality into the goal mouth, uh, and was a delight to watch. You know, I mean, this guy's got pedigree. And when you watch him playing like that, yeah, it was oozing out of him. Mondi, yeah, smashing. I mean, really good. Terrific pace. Not only going forwards when he terrified them, but also in recovery. You know, he came back up against some really quick strikers and his recovery pace was, was terrific. A really impressive performance by him. The centre mids, well, like I say, Davis was excellent. Lots of lovely interchange play, lots of really good awareness, a very high quality assist. Really excellent. Young alongside him again. Typically Young, of course. There was one wonderful instant that encapsulates what he was doing right at the end of the game. Left-hand side, sweeps on the cross. Davis, far post, heads it on target, but it's a tight angle, and he it's an easy save for the keeper. Justin gets up quickly to the edge of his area and delivers early, looking to get a breakaway, which is thwarted because Young, somehow, from taking that corner, which is headed straight to the goalkeeper, 
is back on the halfway line at full pelt, stretching and somehow managing to get his head to it and head the ball clear before it could drop kindly for Marais. Where did he come from? How did he get such energy? Brilliant. His creative passing was good. He was feeding the ball forwards. He was really creating chances. His set pieces were terrific. He had a magnificent strike, which would have led to a brilliant goal were it not for it being deflected over off the top of a defender's head. And he probably was about fifth or sixth choice of man of the match because of the level of performance that we had out there. Excellent stuff from Young. I tell you what, James Jones, certainly the first half, you could argue his best Wrexham performance. Oh, his energy, of course, we know he has that. There was one lovely example of that. Again, late in the game, because like young Jones in terrific condition. Breaking down the right, underlapping for Ford. And Ford has leveled the edge of the area on the right. Ford doesn't play him in. So Jones completes his run, gets to the goal line, sprints back 20 yards and comes back around him, like running in a full circle, like a border collie waiting for you to throw the ball for it. It just doesn't stop. But his passing in the first half was excellent. He was getting into brilliant scoring positions as well. And he was so prominent in the first half. His tackling back, you know, in the second half, his passing wasn't quite as accurate. But it was remarkable how often, having misplaced the pass, he was the one who won it back. <laughs> it was really great stuff from Jones. We really enjoyed it. And then up front. The poor Dagnan defenders will be having nightmares about Mullin. And Palmer. Mullen dropping off sometimes and playing some lovely first time flicks to try and put people in. Uh, looking dangerous all the time, driving into the box. Oh, he was a uh, Mullen quality. Two goals, proper strikers' goals as well. The, the, the poacher getting his head on the corner. And then that second one, genuine quality technique to put it across the keeper like that. But man of the match, uh, uh, with an utterly gargantuan performance, Ollie Palmer. Oh, Ollie Palmer. He was like, you know, he's played that peel though when he drops into midfield. The quality of his passing, short and long, his vision, the number of passes he played that split the Dagnum's defence wide open. But not just that, he completely bullied the centre backs. He he was worth more than the two goals he got. But what form he's in, four games in the row he scored now, four goals in his last two games. The the guy was was magnificent. And I think the best way I can sum that up is, let's be honest, Paul Mullen is a statement signing. We've bought him, he's too good for the National League. And his purpose, quite simply, is that he will score lots and lots and lots of goals. He will terrify defenders because he's too good for this level. And he has delivered on that and then some Mullen. Absolutely magnificent. Went up to 45th in Wrexham's all-time scorers yesterday. And yeah, Mullen has delivered on that promise and then some. I would argue that over the last four or five games, Oli Palmer has matched and not exceeded Mullen's performances and, and in doing exactly what Mullen's been doing and uh, looking to do, dominate. And that's quite something, isn't it? Fantastic. Elliot Lee came on and looked sheer class. McFadden was very busy on the left-hand side, but had very little time to make an impact. And Dolby, again, really worked hard. I can't wait to see that goal for Dolby because he'll, he'll earn it. He's coming on regularly now as a sub. And he's fighting away, he's getting in a box, he's getting close and he's troubling defenders and he deserves better. But that was that was a heck of a performance, a real treat in front of a magnificent rectum crowd again. And, well, you can't complain about what was being served up in front of us at the moment, can you? Brilliant stuff. The highlights will be out at 10 o'clock tonight. And at South End, uh, we go again. Let's see if we can keep this form going. With a final score of Dagenham and Redbridge. No, no, no. Wrexham 4, Dagenham and Redbridge 1. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.